And there are many wrong interpretations from this chapter on hair. Uh, there are many false religions that will embrace this and say that this chapter is teaching that a woman should cover her hair with some form of a veil, a doily, a bonnet, uh, a cover their face, and there's really some bizarre interpretations that come out of this chapter. And I just want to strengthen you in the simplicity of the word that all the answers are here. We don't have to go to a concordance. Most of those are wrong in this chapter. We don't have to go back to the Greek or the Hebrew. You're probably not smart enough to understand of it. Well, some of us are, but that's another conversation for another day. But you don't need it, do you? Uh, if you go to the Greek, it would under, you would understand it would agree with this here. Uh, the Catholics and the Mennonites and the Hebrew Roots Movement today they want women to put something on their head to represent obedience toward God. And what they're doing is they'll reach back and say, well, in the Hebrew culture, a woman would do this with a veil or with her head. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible nowhere commands that a woman should wear a veil over her head to please God. The Catholics do it still today. A lot of them do. The Hebrew Roots Movement, like I said, there's even Baptists in town that do that. Um, and many people get strange interpretations because they don't understand the simplicity of the Word of God. And really they do it because they want their religion to be seen. They want their works to be seen because they're not, they're not, most of them are not faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. They have a salvational issue. They have a text issue. They're reading from the critical text where it criticizes the truth and it changes the words of God into something that even their version of the Greek doesn't say. And they're okay with that because they want you to see how holy they are. And listen, head coverings uh, don't make you holy. Just ask a Muslim. They make their women cover from head to toe, and they can't show anything. But there's all manner of perversion and wickedness in their religion. Another misinterpretation out of this chapter is the Pentecostal holiness, where they will not allow their women to ever cut their hair. And, and that's why you get these big beehives. You guys seen those? Uh, the Pentecostal holiness, they'll read King James Bible. Uh, of course, you're saved by your works. And you can't cut your hair, and the women, you know, a lot of times they'll wear really heavy makeup. Not that makeup in itself is necessarily wrong, but I mean, boy, they cake it on, and then they got this really big hair, and it's like, don't you see my holiness? And it's like, well, you're trusting your holiness to get to heaven. It's filthy rags. Uh, now, the answer to the next dozen or so verses is right here in the chapter. So before I move past verse 4, I want to give you the answer. It's like showing you the answer before we do the problems so you have a better understanding, okay? Uh, look at verse number 14. Move ahead to verse number 14. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. What is the woman's covering? Her hair. And God calls it glorious, doesn't he? Now, if a man has long hair, what does God call it? A shame. That's shameful. You should not do that. That's absurd. That's wrong. 